Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. The origin of the so-called virgin birth story comes from Egypt, not Israel. The Madonna and child goes from black to white. Also, the King James Bible was created in 1611 by 50 scholars who dedicated it to King James, a Bible created by 50 scholars that supposedly already existed. King James Version? Knowing these three facts and many others, you know that history has been manipulated. They took the real story of this so-called Jesus, who was an actual king, and created their own narrative. Those 50 scholars took famous stories from the past and created their own narrative, but I'm going to show you their ridiculous narrative of so-called Jesus versus the actual history. Welcome to Black History Decoded, where I give insight into Black or African history that has been misrepresented over the centuries. So Joseph went to the town of Bethlehem in Judea to register with Mary to whom he was engaged. But there was no room for them in Bethlehem, and the only lodging they could find was a humble stable. Mary and Joseph are nobodies. They are not well known within their community, and especially outside their community. They don't have a home. They are going from place to place in order to deliver the supposed Son of God, which they do in a stable, a place where no royal child should be born. The real history is that this so-called Jesus was born from the most famous parents on the face of the earth, Queen of Sheba, Black Madonna, and King Solomon, aka Queen Tai and Amenhep III. Now there were some shepherds in that part of the country who were taking care of their flock at night. Suddenly, an angel of God appeared to them, and the glory of God shone about them. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born. He is Christ the Lord. A supposed angel appears in front of shepherds to tell them about the Son of God. Side note, my best friend said that an angel is sort of shepherd, meaning that an angel corrals people for them to listen. And when he said that, I thought to myself, well, it was actually another shepherd telling them that someone is in their stable giving birth. So it wasn't an angel at all. But to make the story more interesting, the King James 50 scholars made the shepherd an angel. Note that in the Jesus story, angels or God only appear when it doesn't really matter. For my eyes have seen your salvation. This child is chosen by God. May you both be blessed. Supposedly, the Son of God is in their presence and nobody is aware of this. Even the mother is not recognized. Everybody is going about their day. If Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, aka Queen Tai and Amenhep III, were in that scenario, better believe everybody would stop and pay attention. And three days later, they found him in the temple, sitting with the Jewish religious teachers. Whose child is this who asks such questions? He's from Nazareth. We thought he'd left with us. Please forgive his eagerness. All who heard him were amazed. They lost him for three days. Those 50 scholars were hilarious. You think King Solomon and Queen of Sheba would lose their child for three days without there being a ruckus? His father's house was the temple of King Solomon, AKA Amenhep III. So he wasn't lost. Also, those supposed learned men don't even know who this child is. In the real history, yes, they knew who he was. From the time Queen of Sheba gave birth to the time that he became Pharaoh, to the time that he got done in by his own people, everybody knew who this person was around the entire world. Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, AKA Queen Tai and Menep III were well known around the entire world. So it stands to reason that their son would be too. Why did you have to look for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? 
I tell you this, no prophet is ever welcome in his hometown. By these words, Jesus identified himself as the Messiah, God's anointed, sent to save his people. These Jews did not accept him as the Messiah. They meant to throw him over the cliff. Bizarre, isn't it? 18 year hiatus. Nobody knows where the Son of God went and by this time in his life, he should be well known around the entire world, pretty much. But he comes back to his hometown and nobody knows who he is. He claims to be the Messiah and they want to throw him off a cliff? Now, there's something very interesting about them trying to throw him off a cliff. In the Anunnaki King list, there was a rebellion and the king was pushed off the tower by his successor. Now, I strongly believe that the Anunnaki King list represents the so-called 18th dynasty, which I believe is actually the first dynasty of ancient Egypt. And in the so-called 18th dynasty, that's when Akhenaten, who I believe Jesus is pattern off of, got done in by his people or a particular person being thrown off the tower in the Anunnaki rebellion. So it was interesting that they mentioned the people wanted to throw Jesus off the cliff. In order for him to get all these followers, he had to do something amazing in such a short time, which are miracles. All Jesus' supposed miracles can be explained. He had followers because he was an actual king, Pharaoh to be precise, who had physicians or doctors to cure or help people, a government to make sure the people are not starving, etc. How happy is the mother who bore you and nursed you? <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? She doesn't know who his mother is? His mother was Queen of Sheba, so most people knew who his mother was at that time. As Peter spoke, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. Another example of so-called divine presence at the wrong time. Why not when Jesus is getting jammed up? No, he has to die for the people's sins. Now, that is one of the most cock and bull stories I've ever heard. Do you know the ancient Egyptians would be furious with that nonsense? Jesus dying for, for your sins. They believed in taking responsibility for your sins. People say, uh, this kind of thing because it's a way of escaping negative judgment. Clearly, if you do the right thing for most of your life, you're going to get into heaven, if you believe that sort of thing. By saying that Jesus died for the people's sins, that means that you could still believe in Jesus Christ and commit a whole bunch of atrocities and be forgiven and then make it into heaven. And that's, that's a no-no, that makes no sense whatsoever. That is why they say what they say about Jesus dying for the people's sins. It's to absolve the nasty sinners who don't want to burn in hell for all eternity, supposedly. All they have to do is firmly believe in Jesus Christ before they meet their maker, and then they can make it into heaven regardless of the nasty things that they've done most of their lives. It's absolute nonsense. The ancient Egyptians would be furious with that kind of logic. He hailed him as king. A king? <laughs> a king of beggars, whores, and thieves. We've seen his kind before. They come, they make their claims, they go. They're forgotten. Don't be blind. His following is growing by the day. The people admire him. And think he is a king. Because he was an actual king, the heretic pharaoh, Akhenaten. <laughs> Judas. Is it with a kiss that you betray the Son of Man? Now this is interesting, but I have to do a separate video on this because this story of betrayal actually was taken from another famous story in medieval history. Because when you really think about it, everybody knows who Jesus is and where. He wasn't hiding out. According to their story, this guy was well known, so the government officials, the authorities, etc. all knew about this guy, who he was, where he was, and what he looked like. So there was no reason to pay somebody 
to find him and point him out. But when I tell you where the story comes from, then you'll understand. You are obliged to release one man to us at this festival. Release to us? Barabbas. Yes. Barabbas. Run away with this man. Yes, give us Barabbas. Bizarre, right? They would rather Barabbas, who causes riots and is a murderer, over the Jesus Christ character. The gist of the story in reality, and also in their version, is that Agnaton, Jesus, was a nuisance and had to be done away with. There were major problems in the kingdom, and Agnaton was not fixing them. He was too caught up in his religious fervor, same as so-called Jesus. If this so-called Jesus were solving problems within the realm, then the authorities would have no power over him, but if he was causing problems, then yes, they could do something about it, and they did. Look at that. Very little resistance. If he was so popular, there would be major resistance from the people. That's why you assassinate somebody that is popular. That is what happened apparently to Agnaton. There was a rebellion that day and he died that day. So his followers couldn't rally to protect him. Arresting him, torturing him, putting him on trial, and then parading him through the streets to go to his execution, that would give his supporters enough time to put up resistance, but in Jesus' case, they didn't. So in this scenario, most of the people believed what the state was saying about Jesus. In summary, the real so-called Jesus was the heretic pharaoh Echnaton, whose parents were Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, aka Queen Tai and Amenhep III. That is why he was well known around the entire world, because of his parents. They knew about him when he was born, to the time he became Pharaoh, to the time he died. The reason for his death was because there were problems within the kingdom that he was not rectifying. The people had enough and they overthrew him. This so-called Jesus character, Nobody knew his parents. Only a select few you know, inconsequential people knew that he was born. As a child in the temple, nobody knew who he was. He disappears for 18 years, nobody knows where he went. Comes back, nobody knows who he is, and they wanted to throw him off a cliff for claiming to be the Messiah. He eventually becomes popular based on supposed miracles, which you would actually think would prove his claim, but when it really counts, he cannot prove who he is. The authorities see him as a menace, which is why they want to get rid of him. The majority of the people agree, which is why there is no resistance to stop his execution. The so-called angels and God abandon him when it counts. If we have an honest conversation about the Bible, Quran, Torah, ancient Egypt, or history in general, I guarantee you a lot of revelations will come out, and that will embarrass a lot of people who have been spreading and maintaining lies for centuries. Do you want to live in ignorance, or do you want the truth? If you choose ignorance, then you have a lot to hide, and nobody likes deceivers. Let's have that honest worldwide conversation. Like, share, subscribe, and make a comment. Thanks. When I was growing up, I was taught in American history books that Africa had no history, and neither did I. That I was a savage, about whom the less said the better, who had been saved by Europe and brought to America. And of course, I believed it. I didn't have much choice. Those are the only books there were. Everyone else seemed to agree. A white man that I've worked for, if he's alive today, he has, uh, he's a liberal with a capital L. His name was Gag Steiner. I asked him about some books on the African people in ancient history. 
And in the language of the South, he let me down slow. I mean, he spoke kindly. He said, you know, John, I'm, I'm sorry that you came from a race that's made no history. But if you persevere, if you obey laws and study hard, you make history someday.